Hi everybody. GIS data isn't just the points and lines. There's a lot of information behind the parts we see. Think of it as smart data. For example, a data set of cities would have each city's location, but it might also include information such as population or income. These pieces of data are called attributes, and they let us do all sorts of interesting things with the data. Working with attributes involves a small bit of math, but it's pretty easy and I'll walk you through each of the steps. Having a basic familiarity with attributes will greatly expand the kind of maps you can create. First, we'll create a simple world map. We'll use two vector files from the Natural Earth website, Countries and Populated Places, or Cities. There are download links for these in the description. I'll add the country layers first. Next, I'll add the Cities layer. Besides using the File Browser window to get your files into your project, you can also drag them right from your computer's desktop like this, which is pretty handy. I don't like those city markers, so I'll change the size and color of them by double-clicking on the layer name to open the Layout Properties window. I'll change the markers to red and reduce their size to 1 mm. Adding the cities layer makes them appear on the map. That's important, but we can do a lot more with this layer. Let's see what kinds of data this layer contains. To do that, right-click on the layer in the Layers palette and select Open Attribute Table. And here's the Attribute Table. It looks like a spreadsheet because that's basically what it is. The table shows all of the attributes contained in the data. An attribute is a data point or characteristic of the data. The row across the top of the table shows the different attributes. Scroll the window to the right and you'll see some attributes that are obvious, such as name, latitude and longitude, and population. There are also plenty that are a mystery, such as CAPIN or DIFASCII. The good news is that, for the most part, we can ignore the strange ones and focus on the obvious ones. The only attributes that we've used so far are latitude and longitude. QGIS read these attributes for us and placed each city on the map in the correct location. That's how it knows where to place them. The real power of GIS software like QGIS is what else we can do with the attribute data. For example, this data set contains population attributes we can use. We could use this data to only show cities with a population of at least 3 million or we could visually show the population using different size markers like this map does. I'll close the attribute table for cities and open the table for the countries layer. In addition to name attributes in several languages, we can see other useful ones. Population, GDP, economic type, and income group. We could use these attributes to color countries based on their population, economic type, or GDP per capita. There are two main ways to use attributes. Identifying which attribute to use for something, such as a label, and using the attributes to perform calculations. This video will cover the first of these. I'll cover the second option in another video. The first part is pretty easy. For example, if we want to label the cities on our map, we need to tell QGIS which attribute, which field in the data file, to use for this. Here's how this works. On our map, double-click on the Cities layer to open the Layer Properties window. Click the Labels tab on the left side. You'll see a mostly blank page. At the top, click on No Labels and select Single Labels, and you'll see this. This is where we control the labels for the Cities layer. The Value field at the top is where we tell QGIS which attribute to use for the labels. How do we know which attribute to use? by looking at the attribute table. Looking through the table, we see a column called name. That's the value we need to use in the labels window. The rest of the labels window contains options for styling the labels, size, font, color, etc. We'll go with the defaults for now and click OK. Here's what we get. That's pretty cool and a lot easier than adding all those labels manually. We can label the countries the same way. Double-click on the Countries layer to open Layer Properties, and select the Labels tab. For this layer, the name field is called Admin, so set that in the Value field. 
For these labels, I'd like them to be bigger, bold, uppercase, and a little faded. I'll change the style to bold and reduce the opacity to 50% and increase the size to 20. To change the case to uppercase, click on the formatting tab on the left. Change type case to all uppercase. I also added a bit of letter spacing. And here's the result of that. That's a good example of how we can use the extra data that's built into the graphic parts of our map. Now that we have some idea of what we can do with data attributes, let's up the game a bit. Open the attribute table for the countries layer. Looking through it, there's an attribute called continent. We use this to give each continent a different color. Double click on the countries layer to open layer properties and click on the symbology tab. At the top, change single symbol to categorized. Set the value to continent, then click the classify button. You'll see this. We see a list of the continents and a color assigned to each of them. I'll click apply to see what happens. The map is now color coded by continent, but the colors aren't great. We'll go back into layer properties to fix that. I'll start with Africa. Double click on the little color square next to the name and a window will open. Click on the color bar and select a new color. I'll use a muted tan color. And here's how that looks. That's much better than the vivid color before. I'll repeat this process for the other continents. That looks good. You might have noticed two odd categories, seven C's and all other values. What's all other values? Most datasets have a few records with a value of null. That's what the all other values are, areas that aren't part of the seven continents. It's basically junk data. Since there are no such areas, we can ignore this. So I'll uncheck the box for that one. I'll also uncheck the box for seven C's since that doesn't apply to this map. I'm not even sure what it is. Finally, I don't want to show Antarctica on the map, so I'll uncheck that box too. Here's our final map. Looks great. You could also color each country separately using the same procedure with a different attribute. By now, you should have a pretty good understanding of the first way attributes are used, to identify information for labeling and other presentation factors. I'll cover the second way, to perform calculations with the data, in the next video. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at themapguide.net slash guide and download two free chapters. That's it for now. See you next time.